Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Develop with Eclipse Code Recommenders. In this episode, I'm going to show you a more advanced example of how to use Eclipse Code Recommenders in order to develop something. As you might remember in the last episode, I demonstrated how to install Eclipse Code Recommenders into your IDE and how it is used in the general case. This time I'm going to do something more advanced, something that I did not do before to explore how good Code Recommenders actually is to help me learn how to use an API. So what am I going to do? I want to develop a small Eclipse plugin. Why do I want to do this? Because I heard that Eclipse Code Recommenders is especially good in recommendations about the SWT framework and the JFS framework in Eclipse. And uh, I want to try out if this uh, especially a uh, special strength of the code recommenders can actually help me develop a small uh, Eclipse plugin. Um, I have some experience with developing Eclipse plugins but I have uh, close to no experience with SWT and no experience with JFace so uh, yeah I read some SWT code but I never actually wrote some so I'm pretty much clueless about what I'm supposed to do and I hope that code recommends will help me out here. So what I downloaded here with a setup is uh, an Eclipse installation for Eclipse developers. It's just the, the raw distributions I create the workspace apart from that nothing else happened and I'm going to create a new plugin project. My project is going to be named Greeter because it's supposed to greet us it's going to be for Eclipse 3.5, you don't have to bother with these deta details. I'm just going to create the default uh, plugin project structure. The only thing you have to ensure is that this plugin will contribute to the UI will be enabled so that we have the uh, SWT dependencies. And I'm going to create um, one of the default projects, one of the templates you uh, can use to explore uh, writing uh, Eclipse plugins which will create us a small sample menu and a sample action uh, to start with. Okay, let's just quickly finish this. It will create a structure. I'm not going to go into details about the structure itself but I can start this plugin say run as Eclipse application. Now you see that the second Eclipse instance is being launched. This is Eclipse Luna by the way but it's pretty much the same for Eclipse Kepler or the older releases. Um, so, and now it started my uh, an Eclipse ADE instance with my plugin integrated. I'm a little confused right now because there should be a menu. Don't know. Ah, there it is. So it's some, some updating problem. Here's our sample menu created from our plugin and there's the sample action right below and if I execute it, you see there's a small a dialog popping up with a greeter in the title and it says hello Eclipse world. So this is what was scaffolded for us and now we're going to customize this thing. So close down the Eclipse uh, instance that was launched and let's have a look in the code. So we actually have two components here. One is the activator that is the class that is executed as soon as our plugin is loaded. We don't have to bother with that here I think. And we have a sample handler which is the thing implementing our logic. Okay, yes, so what we see here, this is a, the, the action handler that is executed when I clip, click on the Eclipse menu entry and you see here there's a message dialog, open information with the greeter as the title and hello Eclipse world, the text string we just saw. So now I want to do something more, let's say, sophisticated. I want to create a dialog with uh, entry fields for my first name and my last name and as soon as I save the dialog I want to have this information stored and uh, used to greet me in Eclipse. What I, have, what I have to do for that of course is create a dialog and therefore I'm going to start with a brand new class. Let's call it configuration dialog and it's going to derive from the JFace dialog implementation. That's about it, so let's create this class. Okay, it tells us we have to uh, 
comply to some interface things, add a constructor. I know that in SW2 everything takes a shell, so let's take the shell constructor. Should be uh, the right thing to do here. But actually at that point I'm pretty much clueless about how to continue. So I'm going to ask Eclipse code recommenders control space to open the code completion and let's see what is recommended. Um, you can see here there are the recommendations from Eclipse code recommend. Let me see if I actually can increase the size. Yes, I can. Um, there are a couple of recommendations and one of the recommendations actually is create dialog area. Create dialog area sounds good to me because probably this is where I have to create the dialog. Um, unfortunately there's no uh, no uh, Java doc comments here. Maybe I can see them after I created the method. Yes, I actually can. So create dialog area. Creates and returns the contents of the upper part of this dialog above the button bar. The dialog implements uh, the dialog implementation implementation of this framework method creates and returns a new composite. Composite. I know that is uh, a container in the SWT framework. So. Uh, a container where I can put other uh, controls in uh, with standard margins and spaces. The return controls layout data must be instead of grid data. Okay, so our layout is a grid, apparently, and we must not modify that layout. And if we override this method, then we have we should call to super like this. Okay, let's just copy this uh, information. So we have a super call and we cast the result to composite because we know it is a composite and then in the end we return this very composite. And for reasons of readability let's call this area, this thing area because it's the area we're, we're working on. Okay, so now I want to add something to this area and since I want to add multiple things like the labels on the left side and the text boxes on the on the right side I think I have to create an own composite so let's start with a composite the parent is the area and this style thing I know there uh, in the class SWT there are constants for the uh, for the style and I think non is more or less the default thing you can always use if you don't know what else to use. So let's uh, assign that to a local variable, let's call it container and that's what we're going to work with. Okay, container, what I'm supposed to do on the container? Let's see. This time we have again recommendations and we have also a Java doc. I don't know why it didn't work in the overrides case but now it's working and I can use it. Set layout. Sets the layout which is associated with a receiver to be the argument which may not be null. Uh, interesting. So since I, I already said I want to uh, organize my, my contents on the left side, the labels on the right side, um, the, the input fields, I guess I have to set the layout and I want to use a grid layout. Yes such a thing. What do we have here? I want to have two columns. Yes, and I wa don't want to have them to have equal width because I want to have the text, the input boxes spread over the available width and the labels only as uh, as broad as they have to be. Okay, let's see what else can we do here. We have a set layout. Set layout sounds reasonable because we want to, uh, we want the container we're actually creating here to uh, be layouted inside the, the area it is part of. So set layout data and we read in the, in the documentation of the create dialog that we have to do this by grid data, this very thing here. Yes, grid data, okay, what to do? There's again such a style thing, so it might be, since it's grid data, there might be constants here, 
on the grid data class and actually there are I'm going to go with fill both that sounds like it's going to stretch over the the whole um, the whole area like both in both directions horizontally and vertically so anything else to do here set font no I'm not going to bother with font I set the layout and the layout data already so uh, I assume that's it for the container let's continue next thing is I think it's called label I want to add a label not a AWT label but an SWT label. A label has again a parent which is in this case my container and it has a style uh, as before I'm going to go with none because I have no idea uh, what else it could be. Let's assign this and this is the uh, label first name. Okay on label what do I have to do? 92% set text sounds reasonable so I'm going to say this is the first name colon anything else label first name label first name anything else set layout data yes probably set layout data because we want the label to be layouted within uh, this very thing uh, no, not a grid layout, grid data, isn't it? And yeah, okay. What could I use? Grid data. Let's see. What kind of constants are there? Beginning, center, fill, fill both. No, I don't want it to fill. I don't want it to stretch. I just want it to. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't. I don't have to use any layout here. Maybe the default is just take as much space as you need, but not more. Uh, so I'm going to try this out but the next thing I actually need is an input field and I think this input thing is called text SWT which it's text this one again the parent is my container and the style let's go with none and say uh, text first name okay text first name what do I have to do here I have to set the layout data this time I have to do that because I wanted to stretch uh, over the available uh, space horizontal alignment says grid data um, horizontal alignment beginning probably Vertical alignment, grid data, um, let's say center, and then grab access horizontal space. So this should be the stretch thing. True vertical space, false. We only wanted to stretch in the horizontal. Um, anything else to do here? What do we have? Set text. No, I don't want to set an initial text. I don't want to add a modif modifier. Um, I guess enabled is default for text box so I don't have to set that get text is going to be but the percentages the, the, the probabilities are going really low here so I, I don't think there's something important left so I'd say let's try this out I have a, a small UI set up already and uh, I want to see whether that works, so I somehow have to have to uh, create my dialog now. So I'm going to throw out this message dialog open information thing, and instead I want to uh, instantiate my configuration dialog with the window as a parent thing. No, not the window as a parent thing, but was used at ah, window get shell. Um, window get shell so configuration dialog let's try this again window get shell yes this one thanks for the recommendation and I want to assign this to dialog and then I say how do I use this hmm there's no recommendations now so I'm not exactly sure why but my first guess is that this is because of the type um, 
It doesn't have recommendations for my subtype, but it might have recommendations. Yes, it has recommendations for uh, the supertype dialog. So this is actually one uh, one thing code recommenders can apparently not do yet: uh, respect the type hierarchy. Uh, because I used the concrete type, my configuration dialog, it did not have any recommendations. But now that I implicitly casted this, upcasted this to the JFACE dialog type, it has recommendations that I should call uh, the open method. Um, I guess open should be sufficient for me now, so I guess it should open the, the dialog thing. Let's try it out and let's run our application. The thing I just implemented, it's going to launch the Eclipse um, distribution again. Um, switch back and forth to have the menu activated and let's see what happens. So, as we can see, I managed to create a small dialog here. Um, it has some things that don't quite work yet. I have the label and I have the text box the right of it. The right of the text box is somehow missing a border. Maybe this is a style issue. Maybe a, a, a SWT non was not the correct style uh, thing here, and it doesn't stretch yet. So maybe I have to have a look at that. But in general, this dialog seems quite similar to what I imagined, so I'm quite happy with what Eclipse Code Recommenders recommended me here um, and I actually managed to implement my first UI. I think this is going to be it for today. I'm going to quit here and I'm going to continue in a next episode uh, completing this dialogue with hopefully some more, info, uh, some more help from Eclipse Code Recommenders and I'm pretty confident that I'll manage to uh, implement this very fancy greeter application um, with this kind of support. This is it for today. Uh, if you liked it, uh, feel free to share or use my resources. Also, uh, if you like my content, subscribe to my channel or follow me on Twitter. I will post updates on what I do. And you may also have a look at my other contents like the Let's Develop with Maven in Eclipse or the Let's Develop Conway's Game of Life in a test-driven uh, development fashion. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed it and goodbye.